All right, hello, this is Devin Noblin. I'm with your Firearms Repairs and Diagnostics Tools Lab. Uh, well, I guess not Tools Lab so much. Uh, and we are gonna do the Fastener Repair Lab. And it looks like I've got a pretty good view here. All right, just light just a smidge. And so we're gonna make a hole in some metal and we're gonna tap it, we're gonna break that thing, re-tap it, do some repairs, it'll be fun. So we're gonna start by drilling our hole. I already kind of made the little, little mark there. You can use calipers obviously to make this perfect, but I'm not so worried about perfect. Um, I don't have a true cutting fluid, so I'm just gonna use a non-flammable lubricating oil. If I can open this damn thing. So I'm gonna do that. Not that you probably need it on aluminum, but it ain't gonna hurt. Actually, you know what I need to do? I need to tap it. Sticking tool for the win. Go. Little drop of oil. And let's poke a hole in this thing, shall we? The idea of the oil is to kind of keep it from overheating the drill bit. And you can see these big pieces of metal. And that's why the safety goggles, see? Safety goggles. Fast. Now we have a hole. Now you can use a countersink, uh, but the screws you gave me are flat, so there's really no point to a countersink on this unless you just wanted to clear up the edges there. Um, you could literally just run the countersink in that thing for a split second to do it, but I'm not that worried about it. And I don't think you care all of that much. So now let's, this will be the longest part because my mini mill hasn't showed up. One day it will. I'll be able to do this a lot faster, but this should go pretty quick. I've never tapped aluminum before. I've tapped steel. This is way easier. Except for the that thing. Doesn't like to stay on super tight, but that's okay. Not the greatest tapping bit. You might get to see me fucking having to remove this thing. I'm sorry about the language, apologies. Let's see? All right, we're starting to come through to the other side. Almost. And you wanna go until you don't see the curvature in your tapping bit anymore and it's back up to the widest piece. That way you're Metal bit goes all the way. All right, back there. And I don't know. I pretty well got that. That went a lot faster than I thought it would. I thought there was going to be a little bit more muscle involved. Go aluminum though. So we're just gonna kind of 
flush it out. Make sure there's no little hidden bits in there. There we go. Let's see how well we did. See if I can thread this by hand or if I need to get a screwdriver. I'll need a screwdriver here eventually because I'm going to mess this all up. But that should. Oh, yeah. Okay. And we are all the way through on the other side. So it came in, came out just fine. Okay. Now, let's mess this up. Let's cross thread this and then we're going to shear it and try to back it out. So, slight angle, just enough to get it to mess up. So I'm just kind of applying a little bit of light pressure with my thumb to keep her out of alignment. She shouldn't let us... There we go. Oh yeah. We are cross-threaded like a son of a duck. There we go. Okay. We're good and cross-threaded. Now we're going to mess this up and extract it. Never use this on a piece of firearm because then you scratch the bejesus out of this, but we're just going to and bing. All right. For my final trick, that off there. Put that someplace safe-ish. Let's get our little drill bit here. Again. Okay. So I can see where she's sheared. I'm going to try to line her up with the center of a piece so there's not enough sticking out for me to grab. So all I'm doing is I'm using this, I'm cheating a little bit. This is a staking tool punch. Get myself a little, little dent in there. There we go. Got myself my little dent. What I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna hit the top of that screw with this drill enough to give me a little bit of a spot to bite into with the screw extractor. This would be where it would be handy to have a mill. Mine has not showed up yet. I would certainly not try this on a firearm. Now, should be able to, if I'm lucky, get this thing out. If I'm not lucky, 
Well, we made it through most of it. Okay, so the cool part about these guys, I'm gonna give this a little bit more love on her than I normally would. There we go. Is these things are reversed, so that way you can hopefully get a little bit of a bite in the surface. Oh, I'm close. I'm gonna have to drill you a little more. Yeah, I'm gonna have to drill you a little bit more. comes. Aha. Uh -huh. Okay, so that's all the way out. Handy dandy little tool. So now I have a perfectly clear hole again. We're gonna rerun our thread tapping tool through there. God, this thing is not the greatest. Because I saw on the very top more than that. Yeah, I can feel it catching a little bit. So let's just run this thing down. Now, if you damage these threads enough, you would want to go up one size if you can. There we go, we're all the way through. And let's clean this up a little bit. Come on. Too much caffeine. Long weekend of work. Only conundrum is I only have Sundays to do these labs. And it takes a while for these videos to upload when you're out in the country. And you don't have a whole lot of internet. There we go. So let's get that guy to come in. All the way down. Okay. She's sticking out the bottom. I don't really have anything to re-blue, but let's, uh, let's make it that way real fast. I've got a little chunk of sandpaper. Let's take a finish off here. It didn't take anything to remove. And congratulations, this gets to be my stand. Da, 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 da. And I don't really have a good degreaser, so this is gonna go not well, but.
screwdriver gets a little blued. I don't want this crap on my hands. Okay. And so this is a little trick I used a long time ago. Instead of brushing it with when it's this small of a cloth, you can use Q-tips and stuff like that. But we ought to be able to just brush this on. To our surface here. And then I think we wait. Look at that. I don't know if you can see that so good on the camera, but you can already kind of see the bluing starting to work. Now you should have saw that. And so you can just rinse and reapply with some cold water. We're just gonna wipe and reapply along the edges here. If you saw the video, you would have seen that it was completely, oh yeah, perfect. Out of curiosity, how does that do on my vice steel? Is it going to do anything? I don't think so. I don't think this is the right kind of steel for that. Well, we're going to set it on there and see what happens. And that is actually about perfect. Okay. So normally, you take this off, rinse with cold water. And you would not re you would not blue that obviously in place, fastened in. The bluing is basically controlled rusting, and so it'd be almost like lock tightening it into place if you did that. But normally at this point, you take it, hit it with a little bit of steel wool kind of remove the excess rust. So I'm going to show you what that looks like. It's already happened and it only took about a minute to happen. So you can kind of see, let's see, I'm going to look funny. See the head of the screw. You can still see a little bit of the wear on the corners, but you can see where it's darkened back up and you can kind of see where it looks like it's a, like a scale. And that is basically our bluing compound. Now they say to hit it with steel wool. Man, I've had pretty good luck just using paper. Yeah, see. Let's use the back of the sandpaper. Yeah, there you go. You can see it now. I said there was no blowing on it after I hit it with the sandpaper, and I know the light's kind of reflecting on it because I got my light literally right here. But you can kind of see. Uh, see and then so then it's a reflection and see where it's all blackened back up and so we broke it we tapped it 